Alex, you know, I work in a pretty tiny office, as I might have mentioned once. Sure. And uh, it's in a, it's not in a real like office building. It's not like a high rise or anything. It's like a. It's weird in a replica. Sort of, it's kind of like a, an office hut. <laughs> it's like a two story building, but like every the walkways and stuff are outside. So like technically anybody can come in and enter your your business when during during daylight. Oh, okay. So this is I've been introduced to a fun new phenomenon uh, because of this, which is uh, solicitors. Oh no! And like, uh, weird solicitors. <laughs> so this has happened twice already, and the first one was um, just in the middle of the day. Uh, this 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 woman comes in, and she's just like she just wants to sell like a bundle of makeup. Like and a, you don't need makeup. You're good. No, no, I don't. But okay. she's trying to pitch it to like you know my lady friend or a, mo- a gift for mom or something. Okay. So you know I'm already quite confounded on how to like uh get her out because she's already <laughs> pretty far in 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 past the door and i'm just like no nope, okay not not worth it. i thought she was like giving away a sample and then and then upsell me <laughs> or something here's a, here's a one-time uh lipstick tube so i make the mistake of like picking up this this bag of, of, of packaged makeup and just like looking at it and just like oh okay this is I didn't. I didn't ask if it was a sample because eventually I learned. Oh no, you're actually trying to sell the whole thing. So just like, nope, nope, not interested. Thank you. And then she yeah. eventually just uh, left, left peacefully. Uh, the other time was uh, just a random man walked in asking if we were hiring. I said no. Oh wow. He looked, you know, somewhat older man. He looked like he uh, does this the sort of thing a lot. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Just looking for work. Uh, In all the wrong places. Yeah, that ended much quickly, much more quickly than the makeup lady. I just said, (laughs) no, we're not. And he said, okay, thank you, God bless, or something, and then he left. You you picked him up and said, is this a sample? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Hmm, stout. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So this is like, again, this is a new thing I've been introduced to, because, you you know, I haven't... I've I've worked in these tall office buildings before. I never really experienced this kind of like <laughs> the local flavor <laughs> yeah coming in just whenever and having to uh get them out. Um, I can can't you guys just like lock the door? Yes, but you know, during business hours it's not really so much expected. All You got a, lo- a lot of people coming and going? No, but it just happens. Okay. Uh, there's also the 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 mail carrier comes by and, and does oh, it. Oh, fuck that guy. Oh, it's a woman, but oh, close wow. enough. <laughs> okay, I'm going to resign. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to resign for that. Okay. You just got a, a, a gender wrong. It's okay. Do, does she come by looking for a job? No, I think I think she's settled. Okay. Yeah, I've heard, uh, I've heard post employees actually have a uh, kind of decent... One of them cushy government gigs. Yeah, right? Well, uh, yeah, maybe yeah, I'm, mm. I'm basing that off of, like, from 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, or 50. Uh, before <laughs> before the government decided to just completely fuck over the postal service. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's a bit more fun being a mail carrier than it is working the counter at the post office. Yes. Also, they branched off into music and became an overrated band. I don't, I don't know how that worked. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for listening to No More Whoppers. You've done it again. My name is Ray Barnholt, Snake Barber, and with me as always, accomplice in the McDonald's and Monopoly game scam, Alex Fraioli. I have five million copies of Baltic Avenue. Did you uh, did you read that story recently? I did. That was fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I really, I especially liked how his the, the guy's uh, right hand guy was just a big fat Sicilian mafia guy. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh yeah, that works. That, that really works out. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to make a fortune with the Monopoly. Imagine he walks into McDonald's all like, Where's your gabagool? No, that, it's Mick Gabagool. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, also called Mick Ghoul, which is also an Irish zombie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Who ain't all the gabagool? No. <laughs> Who won all the Monopoly money? <laughs> <laughs> But then they had, the, you know, they they embedded the the video of the commercial where he shows up for like a second. Oh, really? Yeah, in that article, like the dude. Oh, that yeah. yeah. Oh, I hope there's there's got to be a clip of that on YouTube. Yes, that's what it was. It was a clip of YouTube. 
Oh, good. Of the actual commercial where that dude showed up just waggling a fake paper key for oh, a Dodge no. Viper. That the article then described, uh, I believe, that uh, he didn't want it. He wouldn't fit in it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. Great. Uh, does that mean all the other promotions were rigged, like uh, Clue Jr. or the Boggle promotion? Clue Jr. Clu- Cl- I call it Clue Jr. <laughs> uh, or the, the, the Mousetrap promotion... Where, like, every time you got a hash brown, you got a, a ball bearing or a plastic slide. <laughs> or yeah, put them or all slapped together. on the hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, yeah, you know, they, I don't think they ever did the, the Monopoly game in, in Japan. Because I don't think, I'm not, I'm not so sure that Japan no. knows what the fuck a Monopoly is. Japan already has Colonel Sanders, and that's enough cartoonish, uh, weird, mustachioed men. For That's one true. lifetime for that country. Yes, yeah. and they, they've they've always got the Colonel Sanders statues outside of the KFCs, looking like he's about to like somebody's about to hand him a baby. He just got his hands out <laughs> <laughs> in that weird sure. pose yeah. that nobody makes. Yeah, well, they've there's pictures of him holding all sorts of things. Yeah, not just I, boxes of chicken, not just babies. Right. I don't um, know where I'm going with this. It also looks like he's he's making the motion that says, and it was this big. Yeah, or like, you know, like maybe just, story. just beginning to raise his hands to deflect something, like maybe a punch <laughs> or you know, uh, a, a kamehameha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there was that time they dressed him up as Goku. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the one here in Nagoya dressed up as Santa uh, during Christmas. Oh. Because as we know, the KFC is what you do for Christmas. Now, I know that in Nagoya, we got the World Cosplay Summit going on. It seems like a prime time to, you know, dress him up in like a plug suit or something. Uh, that would be pretty cool. I don't know. I've, um, I would like to see Colonel Sanders in a plug suit as a uh, adolescent, fourteen year old who has to pilot a giant chicken robot. Yeah, but that doesn't uh, have to be okay. I, well, I've not seen him in any kind of uh, anime costume outside of Dragon Ball. I'm not. I'm not sure that they've done that. I, I hope that they have and do. Uh, I, uh, Raymond, I have, I have a, a couple of topics I wanted That's to get right. to That's right, we week. have some breaking news, uh, <laughs> but we'll <laughs> get to <laughs> it later about an update on the bar stuff. And we'll right, I, my, my plan of, my plan of attack for this episode is, uh, I have, there's three things I want to get to, and I, I, I call this sequence of events, uh, foot, phone, and fun. <laughs> okay. And I, <laughs> Another good McDonald's not, reference. Not to be confused with food folks and fun, no. which is also fun. Uh, yeah, but to, before we get into that, how how was your week? This is uh, we don't often record uh, this this closely to a previous episode. No, not anymore. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, well, last weekend I did something I've done for the first time. Oh no! What, what, What's that? You want to guess? Um, uh, hang on. Was it eat a pickle? No, I've done that okay. several hundred times. Ride a moped. No. Um, destroy, uh, the institution of marriage. No. Um, avenge your grandfather. Yeah. Oh, sweet. (laughs) How'd it go? Uh. You killed Andros then? Nah, I lost. Oh. I could not. did you do? I could not retrieve the the ancient mirror or whatever. uh... (laughs) The mirror of Palutena. (laughs) Yeah. I was referring to Shenmue. Oh, sorry. The Shenmue's just a tree, right? Yeah, or a basically. sword. Which one? Oh, Shen. The, the it's a tree sword. sword. That's it. We'll find out in Shenmue three. <laughs> Sh- <laughs> Shenmue. That's, that's why we're all artist. waiting for it. We don't know if it's a tree or a sword or both. Shenmue with a vengeance. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, what did you do? I went to California Extreme. Oh, that sounds uh, extreme. Yeah, thanks. Do you have any idea what it is? No. Okay. Is it? Wait. How, can I guess? This will be fun. Okay. <laughs> uh, is is it the other guessing it, wasn't fun? Is it a is it a barbecue restaurant where the food is so hot you have to sign a waiver? No, I'm afraid it has nothing to do with food. And that I really just uh, so you, you give up already. <laughs> Really just quoted uh, Bare Naked Ladies one week uh, there. Oh, oh um, boy. No, uh, is it... Uh, hang on. I get two more guesses here. Okay, yeah, you do. Um, is it... Oh, shit. California Extreme. Is it a hospital? No. It might be about okay. the size of one, horizontally. Is it a theme park? 
No, but it's next to one. Okay, well, that's all I got. <laughs> you were so close. What no, it? it's uh, it's a uh, it's an arcade game show. Oh, fun! They had they've had it for like twenty years now, and this was the first time I went because I actually lived the closest to it at this point in time. So, <laughs> um, I went, and basically they just they take over a hotel and this giant ballroom, and they just have all these collectors come in and bring all their pinball and video arcade games, and just uh, you pay admission and you can play any of them. And uh, it's like it's basically everything. <laughs> if you can think of it, it was probably there. Go uh, ahead, name a game. Some- um, T Mac. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, we're off to a great start here. Uh, Alpine Racer. Uh, no, but I will say that I had uh, Prop Cycle. Okay. Um, Same company. Prop Cycles to them. Uh, do they have Street Fighter the movie? No. Raymond, you're zero for three here. Well, you're you're really um, not going by my expectations. Well, what did you think I was going to say? Mortal Kombat? Of course they Just, have fucking you know, Mortal Kombat. Pac-Man. Yeah, no shit they have Pac-Man. Galaga. Your mom has Pac-Man. <laughs> Fever. What about Pac-Land? Didn't that have an arcade release? Yeah. Okay. What about Ms. Pac-Man? <laughs> oh, yeah. They definitely had that. Dr. Pac-Man. No, they had... Uh, oh, shit. They had some, like, um, hacks, like, uh, you know, people make ROM hacks, but they also make fancy cabinets for them, so it's like, you know, different oh. kinds of, like, uh, you know, hacks of, hacks of Pac-Man and stuff. So, oh, Hackman, yes. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so Gene Hackman was yeah, there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so they had uh, Pac-Man MD. Sure. Pac-Man Extreme. No, just the show is extreme. Um... Okay, anyway. <laughs> Killer Instinct Gaiden. It's not that complex, Alex. But anyway, okay, they did have sorry. lots of games from, you know, 50 or 60 years. Wow. Worth of history. And um, I kind of actually didn't entirely go there for fun necessarily because I, I knew it was happening, but I didn't, I wasn't like planning to go until like three days before because there was like a panel and some people there I thought I could do. Uh, uh, do some business with and as much as just trading a business card and uh, I did that but anyway I did play some cool stuff okay the first thing was uh, Sega Sonic Brothers uh, which was an unreleased arcade game it's okay a, it's a Sega puzzle game and uh, I could I could tell why it was unreleased <laughs> oh no um, well I don't exactly mean it as a negative but it was kind of like confusing at first and i think maybe a bit ahead of its time because it was like it was it was made in 92 and um i think it was i believe i read that it was designed by um the guy who also made uh, bubble bobble and some other related games so he kind of came up with this puzzle game that was a bit uh a bit wonky because like you have you have like four uh i guess sonics <laughs> that, <laughs> that turned into like uh, orbs or, or something or um you know blocks you rotate those around, but uh, it's like they're different colors. But you get to like clear a, a line or a group, you have to like surround a color with a different color. <laughs> so you have this to. This is like, already too complicated. Yeah, glad they went with the action game, the Sonic arcade game originally, because that had Ray the Squirrel in it. Yeah. Yeah. And this just had you know uh, a blue Sonic, a red Sonic, and a yellow Sonic, which is like the same colors as. Sonic, Ray, and Mighty, but it's yeah. all Sonic, well, I, so it's, it's a bit, I was going to say Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, but yeah. Yeah. No, I was referring again to the arcade game. Oh, okay. That, uh, yeah, came after this, so it's just like, these are the these are the Sonic brothers, I guess, but who gives a shit, I say. They're not even brothers. No. They're completely different species. No, no, I'm talking about the puzzle game. Oh. It was called Sega Sonic Brothers. Yeah. And it's just but three. But they're not brothers. It's just identical Sonics. Oh, that's right. But, okay. But they're, then they're clones of each other. Are clones brothers? Folks, right in. Yeah, right. right. Oh, well, I guess they are because we've all played Metal Gear Solid. Right, yes. <laughs> brother! All right. Well, yeah, I don't know. Did, they, did he call him brother out of shorthand? You know, it's never explained. What? I don't, well, yeah. Just because he felt uh, like it. Let's ask Kojima. Ring, ring, hello, and silence. Okay. <laughs> 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 New phone, who dis- Jesus Christ. <laughs> um... <laughs> 
that was like the big thing that I played, and I also kind of went there because I found out it was going to be there, so that's cool. Um, okay. But the thing is, like, it's it the whole thing was fun and expansive, but because so many people are there, it's just like most of the time you're just waiting to play something. Yeah. And most of those things I've already kind of played in MAME, you know? Um, yeah. But it is nice seeing, you know, a few certain games in person, uh, so to speak, like some weird laser disc stuff and... Um, some music games and some of the big mechanical ones like uh not alpine racer but like i said prop cycle and uh things like that um i mean i did play kraken dj which was like a uh a sega dj music game from like Where, the are you a giant are you, are, are, are you a giant squid in that game no kraken as in crackalacken oh okay yeah rhythm okay yeah it's like a fairly uh, well, I mean, you need some skill to play this kind of game. It has two turntable bills on it and a little slider, a little fader thing. Uh, but no microphone. Haha. <laughs> See, because oh, I said sucks. two turntables. Oh, that's oh, it, folks, right. that's a Beck reference. He yeah. was an artist who was a Scientologist. I mean, you know, beat mania Beck? is a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot simpler. Be- Be- Beck uh, famously played a very shitty show in Nagoya a few years ago. <laughs> okay. Famously? Uh, yeah, well, uh, around the city, it's kind of an infamous show because uh, it, it's Beck, and uh, tickets were very expensive. And As he either are. he either actually injured his arm, or he was just lazy and didn't want to do the show because he came on stage like with his arm in a cast. Like, I hurt my arm, so I'm not playing any instruments tonight. I'm just singing. <laughs> so. I guess like he was, you know, down a lot of instrumentation and just kind of stood there and and sung his songs. Everyone's like, "This is dumb." I'm afraid Beck has laryngitis, so he won't be saying anything or doing anything. <laughs> sure, I am crunchy. <laughs> um, that's more Bobcat than anything. <laughs> Close enough. Um, pretty good. I uh, I like when I when I was in college, I went to see uh, uh, MC Chris came to Ohio University, and I'm very very sure he was lip syncing the entire show because. <laughs> Like at the beginning of the show, this the kids. This was back when you could still smoke indoors. Um, it was a bar in Athens, Ohio, that was kind of smoky, and and the guy got on the mic and was like, "Uh, yeah, please extinguish smoking materials because Chris's voice is hurting." So <laughs> m- most people, most people obliged, and he came out and and very obviously uh, sang to a pre-recorded track anyway. Okay. Yeah, and it was, I mean, it was it was still fine. It was good. It was, it was, you know, he was, he was doing banter between songs. I don't think that was pre-recorded. That would be real hard to pull off. No, that'd, that'd be interesting, though. <laughs> Anyone here from Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> what a bunch of clowns. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, so I, I, I played some other stuff, but I think, you know, most of it was because I was just trying to kill time in, in between the um, the panels I was, I was he, there to go to. Oh yeah. So I mean, I just played some Arkanoid, and then I played some Excite Bike Versus. Um, you know, <laughs> both things I could have easily played at home, but I was just like, I gotta kill some time. I'll wait behind this guy to finish his Arkanoid session or whatever. Um, uh, okay, I've got some questions about some ROM hacks that might have been there. Did oh they? Boy. Did did I'm they? I'm not have... sure. I want you to continue this bit. Did that? <laughs> I love it so much, though. I really don't. Did Did they have uh, the the dog version of that game, Barkanoid? Yep. Okay. Uh, did they have uh, Tekken Babies? Yep. All right. Uh, you you just say yep to everything I say, aren't you? Uh, I'm. I'm it, it, it'll. You know what? You know what's you worse than yes. <laughs> you know what's worse than yes ending is just yesing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. All I right. told you uh, I wanted no part of this. God damn it. Fine. <laughs> You're the boss. Well, kind of. We're the bosses. I'm the boss of my own fate. And uh, just like Double Dragon, when this podcast comes to the end, we're going to have to fight each other. <laughs> Barkanoid, really? <laughs> oh, the best you got. Sorry. Sorry. Tekken babies? That's just like... <laughs> whatever. It, it's almost like I'm making these up off the top of my stupid head. Yeah, it's okay. I still love you. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
But yeah, that's what I did last weekend. And again, uh, you know, I had neglected it for so many years, but uh, I'm glad I went nonetheless. Maybe I'll go again next time. Cool. Under less, uh, well, with more uh, word ahead of time. Because again, I just heard about what was going on on Thursday and it was like, oh, okay, well, I, I guess I'll just uh, buy a ticket for Saturday and then walk around a little bit and kill time. All right, fun. Yep, great. And uh, I went home well, and had dinner. Okay, uh, you can stop the story there. I oh, think. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, but now I got okay. What happened after dinner? Uh, 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 poop. All right, we can. Okay, we can definitely stop yeah, it. There. Okay. Okay. Just checking. All right. Well, uh, I yeah, you know, I I've had uh, health insurance in Japan for a while. I didn't have to use it until. Uh, I, I, I mean, the last time I used it was when I, when I had the teeth issues a couple years ago. Oh, did you but also I got to, get your wisdom teeth out? No, yes. Got them taken out of my feet. I got, I got my wisdom feet out. I said teeth. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I know. We break. I got my wisdom teeth out when I was 19. I talked about that last episode. Well, you can always go and get them again. Okay, I'll get them reinserted and then re-removed. Yeah, and then, like Ray, and then Ray Romano shows up. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Dentist! Dentist! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> boy, oh boy, you're uh, <laughs> <laughs> loopy. I think you just shifted in the second gear here. <laughs> Gaining speed. Um. So yeah, I um, I was uh, hauling some heavy things out of the bar, which I, I mentioned uh, before. I had to remove the consoles from the bar uh, out of legal fear. I don't want to get busted. Yeah. And guess what? It turns out when you move uh, dozens of machines. And you try to do it all in one trip. Uh, it's really heavy. Mm, yeah, it's progressively heady, heavy. Yes, and heady. Even, you know, exponentially heavy. Y- y- yeah. Uh, wait, is that a joke? No. It was just okay. a word I like to use. All right. I like exponents. I'm a huge fan of those. Okay, great. Um, I and I was uh, hauling a whole bunch of uh, consoles back home. Uh, fortunately, a lot of my uh, friends who come to the bar uh, offered to adopt some consoles for the time being and uh, some of their favorite games so they could enjoy them at home. Yeah. Uh, but I had to take home the majority of them, and I made the mistake of doing so while wearing sandals. Okay. That's... And, that, yeah. Mm. <laughs> So like I, I yeah talk about I, wisdom feet. I, <laughs> Maybe you did have to get them removed. I climbed out from my subterranean bar lair, holding uh, uh, four or five bags, each filled with uh, at least two consoles each. Okay. And and like like including heavy shit. Like one of them was the PS3, like the original model. Yeah. And I I step out of the bar into the hot hot uh, July sun. And uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm not I'm, like to walk from the bar to my home takes less than 15 minutes. Right. And I'm like, I can't walk this. So I just kind of hobble over to the Hilton, which is next door. And I, there's always taxis there. So I just get, I get a taxi from the Hilton and I just tell him my address and we get to my place. No problem. And I, I unload the taxi and the guy drives off <laughs> and then I start uh, carrying them up to my apartment. Yeah. As and, you do. Uh, yeah, and I do that, and everything's good. Uh-huh. And then starting the next day, I had this intense pain in my left foot, like right where the the, the big toe meets uh, uh, the main foot area. But nothing had happened beforehand. Uh, you're, yeah, I didn't drop anything on my foot, but it felt Jeez. like I, I strained a muscle or something real bad. Okay, fun. Uh, and then... The next day it got worse, and the next day it got way worse to the point where uh, I had to call off work and ask my man Zan to work for me. Man Zan? Oh, right, Zan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oop. Excuse me. Uh, so then uh, I was sitting at home uh, in very clear pain mm-hmm. uh, and doing nothing, and my wife is like, maybe you should go to the doctor. I'm like, I'm fine. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, was this like really, really bad? Like you can't yeah. walk kind of bad? Uh, my foot was swollen, and walking oh. walking was a crippling ordeal, uh, okay. th- which I could do, but it took me a very long time to get anywhere. Yeah, that's some hospital caliber stuff. Yeah, so uh, we called up a local uh, clinic, and they're like, yeah, come on in tomorrow. So we did. Uh, oddly enough, uh, riding a bike, no problem. I rode my bike to well, the clinic. Mm, yeah. 
And then, uh, yeah, because all I'm depends. doing is pushing down with my heel, and my heel is fine. Yeah, depends on, yeah, on how, what you were pushing, putting pressure on, so yeah. Yeah. So we get down there, and I, I park the bike, and then hobble into this clinic, and it takes me a long time. And there's nothing more embarrassing about, like, walking like you're 90 and just had a hip replacement when you're only 35. <laughs> it's kind of like, fun. I, I felt Chilly like, I vision was, of things to come. I was very self-conscious, like all, all these young people must be staring at me. Not only am I a guy gene, I'm also walking weird. Mm, well, I don't know. I think if I had to guess, most of them were ignoring you because of that. <laughs> uh, well, I hope so. That would be yeah. great. Uh, so yeah, we go in. Um, as a side note, I'm pretty sure I was treated by a uh, hot goth doc from Persona 5. Okay, I'm not familiar, but all right. You didn't play Persona 5? No. Get out. I'm waiting for the ultimate edition or whatever. Of course you are. At this point, yeah, why not? And it turns by out the that... Way, um, by the way, what? you cannot what? say goddamn shit to me about not playing a Persona game when I've played many more than you ever have. <laughs> Is this a competition? Yes. Okay, then. Um, <laughs> so it turns out what Did I had... Did that sound too mean? I apologize. That that was kind of a shitty thing to say. Okay. Uh <laughs> I was diagnosed I, with a wasn't thing. Totally serious though. Oh, okay, <laughs> that just seems like some straight up uh, uh, JRPG gatekeeping, which well, I don't you, really you have any what? time for. You know what? I'm what? I'm, a, I'm a bit hurt. You know, I've been damaged in the past. I, you're just so a bit I shit. Think... Well, so don't. So why do you take it out on other people? Because you started it. <laughs> that's not no. That's not the healthy thing to do. <laughs> you're the one who hurt me. If you're eight years old and I beat the shit out of you. Are you going to grow up and then beat the shit out of an eight-year-old? Well, let me go back I mean, and I know be you eight years are. old first. <laughs> what? Well, I'll have to go back and be eight years old again. We're going to have to get a time machine to make this work. Yeah, okay. I will, so, send, um, back, I will send back a T-800 to rough you up. Uh, I'm just saying. Okay. Don't get snippy at me about Persona. Uh, I am always going to get snippy with you about everything. <laughs> Can okay, It's not that one. Fine. All right. Anyway, clarify. Is the doctor a woman? <sighs> yes. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so it turns out I had a, 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 a condition called sesamoiditis. Not, not as delicious as it sounds. <laughs> okay. I yeah, was going to ask. Um, sesamoiditis is <laughs> most commonly diagnosed in ballerinas and horses. <laughs> so... <laughs> So you're in good company. I mean, very. I'm in beautiful company. Some of the most beautiful creatures in the world. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they even collaborate on stage sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you seen Horse Lake? That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm in other things. I'm sure. Oh, I guess. Okay, so you got um, horse disease. I got a horse. <laughs> I yeah, I got horse foot. I got the bad case of the horse foot. And they're they're just like, all right, here we're gonna take an X-ray to just to make sure, and here's some meds, and it should clear up in about a week. And it did. It's yeah. uh, it's it's pretty good. Oh, boy. And 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 oh. thanks to the the miracle of Japanese healthcare, that entire thing cost me twenty nine dollars. Fantastic. Yeah. By the way, now here's uh, what. Oh, I was gonna no, say go. I forgot to mention when I talked about my teeth last time how much it was. Oh no. <sighs> How much was it? It was, you know, a couple of bones. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we could afford it, so. Okay, it good. It worked out, but it was, was still it, like, was oh, it? I wasn't really expecting to pay that much up front. Was it, was it well into the triple digits? Yeah. I, like, I could have bought a computer. Oh. That kind of well, money. Yeah, but. It's okay. okay. Anyway, finish your thought. Uh, so yeah, I we I was um, asking like how did this happen, and she's like, well, uh, it happens through like continued repeated uh, stress in that particular area. Mm -hmm, got that. And we 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 figured out that what it was in my case was I have been wearing uh, like every summer I like I, I like uh, to wear sandals. You love the sandals. I love sandals. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love being sandals. Come on, you're begging me to make a drop. Uh, uh, hang on. Can you hear the siren? Yeah. 
I think they're closing in on the bar. <laughs> Are you in the bar? No. Okay. I'm at home. Um, yeah, so my left foot is slightly smaller than my right foot, so every time I take a step in my sandals, I am, uh, without realizing it, I am very slightly clenching my left foot to keep the sandal on. Oh, yeah. And uh, I have just been doing this for, you know, hundreds to thousands of time, per, uh, times per day for years. And, and uh, it seems like, you know, hauling heavy consoles in the sandals and still doing that while my arms are, are uh, laden with machinery apparently pushed my, my foot bones over the edge and just caused shit to immediately go bad. Well, you do love sandals. I do love sandals. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You can make these into multiple drops. Uh, let me just ask you the obvious question. Go. Do you have any kind of suitable enough footwear? Oh, yeah. I've, I've switched to uh, sneakers. Okay. I think... For sneaking. Look, I'm, I don't mean to sound too judgmental. You already do. But... <laughs> You could stand to lose a few. No, I mean, um, oh, you know, I, if you're gonna go carry all the heavy things all the time, including machinery, like I would wear, you know, a little bit more protection on the feet. Well, it's, I guess, thank you. I know that, but it, it, the idea was not to do it in one trip. The idea was I'm gonna divide up these things into bags. Um, Ruri's gonna help me take some. We're just gonna put a couple in our bike baskets and make several trips. Right. And but, then, uh, uh-oh, we don't have enough time. Uh, time to do it all in one trip. What? SpaghettiOs. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, the thing is that because they're heavy, you're still making the clench motion on the sandals. So, yeah, it's, that sucks. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I wasn't supposed to be carrying that many heavy things. I can carry some heavy things. Okay. But I ended up carrying all of the heavy things, which turns out is heavy. Yeah, that, anyway... That's yeah, it know. for foot talk. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, no. I want to talk about my foot. You know, Oh, I, no. I got a thing called a Haglund's deformity. Uh-oh. Which is like... Wait, is this a real thing? Yeah, it's like... Oh, uh, shit. Wait, is this is this named after the Harry Potter character? I don't think so. Okay. Um, But it's like on the on the rear of the foot, of the rear, rear of the heel, basically. Okay. Um, it's like the bone part there is a bit too big for its britches. Ew. So if I'd like do a lot of walking and or running, like it'll start to swell up and push out and not feel great. Oh yeah. And, uh, there's no real like (laughs) relief, um, other than, you know, getting surgery to like shave that bit down. (laughs) Oh oh, oh, no. Okay. That's one of the things that always gives me the heebie jeebies is people talking about shaving bone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Not fun. No. But the thing is that, like, sort of like your condition, and that's why I bring it up, is like, it doesn't really hurt in the middle of everything. It only hurts, like, the day after. And then, you know, I start to feel a bit limpy. <laughs> so so if, just, if you yeah. want to go for a jog, you're in for a world of pain the next day. Yeah, and it only seems to be a recent thing, like in the recent uh, past year or two, where this really started to flame up more. So. Oh, yeah. I think it might be kind of a footwear thing, of course, like you, like like yours as well. So um, I don't know if like if I wear my actual running my athletic shoes, then it's mostly okay. But if I wear anything thinner than that, essentially, then you know it, it's not a, it's not a good scene. Let's design orthopedic footwear for each other. Okay, <laughs> you're getting clown shoes. So we make kickstarters for each other. Yes. Yes, Kickstarter kicks. And, yeah, okay. Give me ten thousand dollars, and I'll make you a pair of shoes you'll love. Okay. All right. Oh wait, dollars? No. Uh, well, Canadian dollars. Okay. <laughs> hey. <laughs> no fair. Catch it. Yeah. Anyway, nothing tells, else new uh, with your feet. No, that's uh, it's just another installment in our uh, ongoing series. The human body is bullshit. Ah, uh, yes, of course. We need we need some theme music for this segment. Uh, right, yeah. Well, right, I got yeah. this so far. Alex, what's going on? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> and actually, I think I do have some theme music for this segment. Uh, if it's the Yoshi ah. thing, I'm gonna ban you. Uh, get out of here. 
Get out. Get the hell out. Can you hear me? I'm screaming at you to get the hell out. A Alex, dead mackerel. You better not just be pretending not to hear me. Because I swear to God, once this song ends, I'm going to have you out on your ass. For real. No prejudice. Actually, extreme prejudice. Excuse me. And I'm taking your sandals. This is the day I start killing you. So you have to live with your bare feet. Thank you and good night. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, I think that's that's uh, all for this segment. Why don't yeah, we take a quick break? What? Oh, oh. <laughs> Why don't we take I love a quick break? being hairless. <laughs> I love being jobless. <laughs> Why don't we take a quick break and come back with segment two? Folks, we're back. It's No More Whoppers. I'm Ray. That's Alex. And now Hi. Alex will read an excerpt from that McDonald's Monopoly story. My wife makes a goo goo shit. will blow your mind. That's right. Yeah, Thank he you. did say that. That was pretty good. Yes. I, yeah, I can't believe one of the prizes was a lifetime supply of goo goosh. <laughs> it's McDonald's instant goo goosh game. <laughs> hey, goo goosh. <laughs> What's good for the goo goosh is good for the gagander. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Oh, bird sayings. <laughs> Ow, my ear. Ow, fuck. Now what? God damn it! Like I, you know, I my my cans. I can't wear cans for more Your than ass? like. Oh, you can't wear my ass. I can't wear cans for more than half an hour before they fucking hurt my I ears. I know, sweetie. Just get a new one. Oh, okay. Get to get a new ears. <laughs> yeah, go back to the doctor. Oh, what else shit. you got? What do you, what you got? got an, show yeah. me an ear. <laughs> I broke all the bones in my ear. Do you got like an ear swatch? Oh. <laughs> so Raymond, I, <laughs> I, I promised, I promised uh, three things this episode. I promised foot, phone, and fun, and it's time to move on to the second part of that. Phone. Phone. Uh, phone. I got a new. I got a new phone. This story is not as simple as that. Uh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, congrats. So first of all, I guess. I, I've been I've been using the same shitty uh, iPhone six for uh, over three years now. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much, I think I got it right when it came out. Yeah. Uh, and the screen has cracked once uh, when I was playing Pokemon Go in the park, and I dropped it flat onto the stone ground. Oh, we've all been there. Yeah. So I got that was covered under the insurance. So I got it uh, fixed. Okay. Uh, and then the the screen cracked. Again, a couple mm-hmm. months ago, when I dropped it at work, um, and uh, the battery has stopped working for about six months ago. Yeah, so, like, that any, sounds any, like your typical technology luck. Yeah, anytime it's on, uh, uh, anytime it's unplugged, I have maybe five minutes max, depending on what I'm doing. Yeah, this is why, by the way, that jeopardizing your video game bar is so serious because you're more comfortable with old ass technology. Exactly. Yeah, you turn it on and it works. Yes, my my NES from 1990 still works. Yeah, there's no glass screen on that. No the fucking iCloud. And I I do carry that around when I play Pokemon Go too. Yes. <laughs> well, you got to make friends. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, kids, this is what a video game used to look like. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm like, all right, it's time to trade in, time to get a new phone. So I go to SoftBank, and the reason I got the 6 last time was uh, I was on the 4 previously, and my 4 was fine, but it was old and kind of slow, and they had a campaign like, trade in your 4 and get a 64 gig uh, 6 for uh, really cheap. Hold on. Hi. Trade in for what? Oh, no. (laughs) What have I done? (laughs) <laughs> now I know. 
Uh, and it turns out it wasn't even that cheap. Like I traded in the four. Uh, oh yeah, well, no for kidding. you know for the six, yeah. and I was with the four. This is the shitty thing about um, not just SoftBank, but I think like having a smartphone in general. SoftBank is shitty. Um, yeah, it, it's that you're you're paying for it every month. Yeah. Um, when I had my original phone when I came to Japan, I had a a Gatake or a flip phone. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> Gatake um, HMO. Yes, I had that for about three or four years. And then a very, uh, I don't want to say annoying, a, a, a very, a person with very strong feelings about Apple got an iPhone <laughs> and would not <laughs> shut up about it. Uh, and I, I finally jumped on the train, cause, uh, not because of him, because I went home to visit uh, for Christmas and my sister had one. And I'm like, yeah. all right, that is pretty cool. I think I'll get one. So I got, and when I was at the flip phone, my SoftBank bill every month, I'm going to say was like four, it was four to 5,000 yen a month. Yeah. And with the iPhone, uh, my first one was the 3G. It was uh, my my bill shot up to about six thousand yen a month. Jesus Christ! Yeah, right. And then uh, when I when I switched to the four, not much of a change. Maybe it went up to like sixty five hundred yen a month. Uh, and then when I switched to the six, it shot up to between uh, eight and nine thousand yen a what month. What is going on? Uh, the phones are just getting more and more expensive. Well, yeah, but I mean. Also, and they're so I, bilking you for whatever they can get. That's also true. Also, um, Soft, SoftBank's plans are bullshit. Yeah. Um, as, as a brief aside, uh, proof of that is when I went in to get the six years ago, um, they sit you down, and it, it's not as easy as like, hi, I just want to get this phone with my existing contract. It's like, let's go over all the possible things you can add to your contract. So like what they do is they, they put this they put this plan in front of you which is every fucking possible feature and option that you can get and it's basically your job to go through them one by one and uncheck the ones that you don't want which guess what is most of them. Yeah, I mean that's the problem with the big companies cuz you know they try yeah. and yeah, they give you all these different options and bundles and make it seem like you have a choice but in the end you have a bunch of shit that you really don't need. <laughs> Yeah, and and this is the shittiest thing about uh, some of SoftBank's uh, op- options is that they're not. Some of them are not options, right? Um, there was one. There were no. There were two of them, at, like at the very bottom of the list. Like the guys going over the plan, and like for all the other options, I'm like, don't need it, don't need it, don't need it. And we get to the last two, and I'm like, yeah, I don't need these either. He's like, oh, if you don't want these, you have to come in tomorrow to cancel them. <laughs> I'm like. Uh, n- uh, no, I'm just going to cancel them now because yeah. I don't want them. He's like, no, oh, sorry, these come standard. They, they, they're they there at the beginning, but if you don't want them, you can come in tomorrow to cancel them. I'm like, I'm yeah. not going to be here tomorrow. I'm going to Issei to visit my friends. I'm going to be out of town all day. And he's like, ah, well, if you don't come in tomorrow, then uh, they're gonna you're going to be charged for this billing cycle. I'm like, I don't want them. I'm telling you right fucking now. Take them off. And he eventually, Alex. he let me do that. But first, I had to. He had to call up a guy somewhere else. Yeah, corporate. And it, he had to call up a corporate guy, and then uh, the corporate guy had to ask me like ten times to confirm I didn't want it. And I had to like, I couldn't just say yes or no. I had to form the sentence, "I do not want these particular options." Before he would actually take them off. Yeah, basically the verbal version of clicking the "I agree" to these terms and conditions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's that was my story with the six, and then I I got that uh, ex- exorbitantly priced plan. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and then flash forward three years, I need a new phone. I haven't learned my lesson, so I go back to SoftBank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why haven't you learned your lesson? Well, I did learn it this time because I'm looking at the the iPhone well, uh, ten. What I mean is going to what? SoftBank specifically. Well, it's it's because I already have a contract with them, so I feel like it's going to be the smallest headache. Oh, so you're basically, you're still on like, I mean, uh, you're still financing the the thing. No. Well, that's the thing. It had been paid off for a year. Okay. But the price hadn't gone down. Like my monthly fee was staying the same. I don't know fucking why. Okay. Well, I mean, to me, that sounds like a good reason to get off of the company and or the contract at least. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Well, uh, I go in there. I'm looking at all the new phones. Okay, I guess we'll see. Uh, hey, this iPhone, uh, ten, is it 10 or X? I've never heard anyone it's say It's 10, it. believe right. it or not. I, it uh, be the, the, the iPhone X in uh, 10 and 10. 10 year uh, on day business. Thank you. I uh, look at that. That's a little too funky future for me. 
Yeah. Uh, so then I, I start looking at the eight. I'm like, all right, I kind of like the eight. This is the size of my six. This is more what I'm used to. Yeah. Um. So I, I asked the the nice woman, "Hi, I, I I'm interested in upgrading to the iPhone 8. and she's like, "Okay, awesome." Uh, you know, we here we call the, it Hachi. <laughs> we go over the plan shit. Uh, I did. I do the exact same thing as last time. Say no to all the options. Have mm-hmm. to specifically say no to the last two options. <laughs> but but they, did they give you the same amount of guff? <laughs> For that um, part? No, no. Oh, okay. the, um, they either learned their lesson or just didn't care, because I was able to get out of them uh, without without having to do any any calls. So okay. we're, we're, she's telling me about all the features about the eight, blah blah blah. And I'm like, I, no, it's fine. I want it. It's good. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, all right, well, you're gonna have to come over here and uh, pick out some uh, Bluetooth headphones and a case and a screen protector. And I'm like. I know you're trying to upsell me on everything, but like, I know I need the Bluetooth headphones, and I know I need a case. I don't really need a screen protector. It's fine. Uh, so she's like, fine. And then we sit it on down, and I, I look at, at the thing, and it's like, the monthly the monthly cost is going to be between ten and 11,000 yen a month for four years. Yeah, so over 100 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And... That's the point where, like, I went into SoftBank because I already had a contract. And I went in out of simplicity, and that's the point. That's the the tipping point where my brain was like, "Okay, this was simple, but this is monstrously expensive." Right now, it's personal. So, yeah. Now, <laughs> yes, <laughs> iPhone eight. Now it's personal. <laughs> yes. uh, I uh, so I, I just politely excused myself. I said, "This is way too expensive. I'm sorry," and I just left. Too rich for my blood, says Alex. Yes. Yes. And went on down to, uh, well, first of all, I, I got on my my existing shitty phone, and I, mm-hmm. I texted uh, some of my friends. We have a group chat going, and I'm like, hi, guys. Uh, need new phone. Need no star. <laughs> RM pick. <laughs> 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 Uh, just, just laughing again at our completely synced up <laughs> brains. Go ahead. Um, I need a new phone and I need a cheap plan. What do I do? And um, uh, my my buddy Jason recommended just getting an iPhone SE because I, st- I still want to stay on the on iPhone because um, yeah. I am I am trapped with them because I have dumped thousands of dollars into uh, movies, music, and TV and apps. So uh, guess what? <laughs> just gonna stick with those, I guess. Yeah, apps like Blast Rush. Exactly. Now available on iOS and Android. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I was gonna I, say iPhone SE. Yeah, he recommended the SE, and I'm like, that's a good idea. What do I do for a plan? And then uh, he uh, and my friend uh, Charlie, they both recommended uh, Rakuten Mobile. Yeah. Uh, so I go down to the Apple Store, and I, I pick up uh, the uh, rose gold iPhone SE. Wow. For fifty thousand yen, which is a, a nice little slick phone. Uh, I did uh, in my iTunes. I did name the phone Rose Gold Pretzels. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's I. I didn't realize how much I missed the size of the four. Yeah. Because the six when the six came out, it was bigger than the four, and then there was a six j- jumbo six S. What was that? Six plus. Six plus. Yeah, that was just. Yeah. It was just the size of an iPad Mini. It's like who fucking I, needs that? I now have a seven plus. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, originally I got it to like make a bigger screen for GPS because of my driving commute. Oh, uh, okay, that and makes my sense. My commute's so small and stuff. I'm not sure it's really necessary. Yeah. Maybe I'll get the iPhone 10 too. Wow, Yuna's revenge. Yes. <laughs> uh, I so I I when I got the six, I'm like, well, this is bigger than I'd like, but it's the smallest option, so I just went with it. And then. I'm back with the SE, which is the size of the four and five, and I'm like, I've missed this so much. This this fits so perfectly it's in my head. People who miss it so much. And it, yes, guess what? It's great. Yeah, good. For I you. and and at first I'm like, I like the size, but now the text is too big. And then I go to the settings. And it's like you can adjust the text size. Like it's I everything's great. Yeah. Um. So I I picked that up and I took it to Rakuten Mobile. And when you Rakuten, walk into Ra- Rakuten, which of course means easy points. Thank you. Uh. No, I think it, I think it means fun heaven. <laughs> I'm pretty, so, uh, it might be easy heaven. Yeah. Easy heaven. Oh yeah, or easy. Yeah. All right, yeah Trust Raku me, I'm an expert. Have, you're right. You're right. Yeah, Raku. <laughs> Raku. Doing my kanji drills. Excuse me. 
Uh, Raku's. I used to see that word a lot in uh, Dragon Quest X walkthroughs because there were no English resources for the game when I was doing ten and ten. Right. So it was like, uh, if you're fighting this boss, uh, use blah 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 and do blah blah blah, and it'll be Raku. <laughs> <laughs> so, can, yeah, it can also mean easy. Of course, now you know what I have to do now. Oh no. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Uh, for those unaware, Rakuten is basically the the Amazon of Japan. Yeah. Uh, only it's <laughs> not run by a, a megalomaniacal slave driver. Mm, kind of. I think not, this was the CEO guy who badly. had like everyone who works there use standing desks, so I, well, everyone well, has to stand up. Well, you know, stand. I stand up uh, for my job every day. Yeah, look what it did to your feet. Shut up. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't wear sandals at work. I wear Crocs, and they have a support in the back that keeps them from flying off my feet, so I don't have to clench my toe. Okay, fine. Smart guy. Yeah, fine, mister. Yeah. All right. Maybe Rakuten has a, a, a clench cure. Yeah, well, I hope so. Yeah. For my for my modern maladies, Rakuten's modern life. <laughs> I uh. That'll be the title. <laughs> Man, I was really pulling for foot phone and fun. Okay. Um... So I, I bring this iPhone SE into Rock 10 Mobile. And Rock 10 Mobile, they are they are genius. They okay. n- they know how shitty other uh phone carriers mm. are in Japan. Okay. And when when you walk in, they have a they just have a, a pamphlet um with a list of carriers and a list of phone numbers that you can call to cancel your contract. And not, not only that, so. but next to the phone number they have a specific, they have a line that you have to say in order to legally cancel your phone coverage. Oh my God. It's like a, it's like a helpline. It's like, yeah. If you've been domestically abused, call our helpline. Jeez. Exactly. Right. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's like that, uh, the woman who, uh, you are not alone. A, it's like, yeah. It's like the woman who, uh, reported domestic abuse by, a uh, uh, call 911 and they pretend like she was ordering a pizza. Right. Yeah. Right, so like I did that at SoftBank. I called Rakuten. I was like, oh, I'd like to order a pizza. And uh, so I did. I went over there, I uh, with my iPhone SE, and I, I looked up the SoftBank number, and I called the thing. Yeah. And canceled it right out. And when you cancel it, they give you this number. I forget what it's called. It's called like an NMP number or something. Yeah. And you you write that number down, and you have to give that number to your new carrier because that like has your info. That's your um, your, it's got your phone number and everything. And they okay. let you carry your old phone number over, which was nice. Yeah, of course. Well, that's, yeah, it's also kind of a requirement thing. <laughs> is it? Well, he, over here, I mean. Oh, I, I don't think it is over here, because I know there are some people who have switched carriers and had to get a new number. Well, it's nice to have the option, right? So. Yes. Well, uh, I look at the pricing. Their cheapest plan is uh, two, two gigs a month for uh, 1,480 yen. Okay, yeah, two gigs that's, is like the new minimum. That's like fifteen bucks a month. Mm-hmm. And guess what? I don't really use data unless I'm using GPS, or well, the, huh? the rare event that I'm on a train that I look at Twitter. Then I'll use my data, but, but usually don't. But what? you're on messaging apps, aren't you? Yeah, but like I don't even. I just put myself in airplane mode when I'm not at work or home. Wow. Yeah. I'll be damned. What do you think about that? I just bought the deed. What do you, how do you, what do you think of that? It's very frugal of you. Yes, no wonder well, you're walking around in sandals. <laughs> I, I got I got into the habit of doing that because of my old phone, because yeah. because the battery was so bad. Uh, anytime I left Wi-Fi, I knew it would, if it started pulling from the network, it would drain the battery faster. So I just started putting it in airplane mode any, anytime I left the house. Okie doke. Uh, now it has, uh, pissed off my accountant when he needs to get in touch with me. And then I, I come out of airplane mode and I've got like seven messages. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's not good, but, but yeah, um, 1480 a month if you're an existing Rock 10 member, which I was. And even if you're not, they let you become one before you sign up. So it's 1480 a month anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I shelled out the extra 500 yen a month for the insurance. So it's 2000 a month. Uh, because as you know, I'm a, a clumsy goof and I'm probably going to drop my phone at some point and crack the screen and, uh, f- five bucks a month that, that covers that. So I do all that. Um, and now in order to cancel SoftBank, I've got to pay a cancellation fee, which is about, uh, it's about 13,000 yen. It's approximately probably, 130 bucks. You probably also have to pay a protection fee. 
What? From SoftBank, because they're like the mob is what oh, my no. joke was. No, 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 Ray, mobile. Oh, Mo- but it has mobile. mob right in the name. It does. It's also got Where's Isle. Where's your <laughs> Uh, so I, I paid this 13000 in cancellation fee, and I did the math. Uh, buying a, a, an iPhone SE just all up front for 500 bucks and paying the 130 buck cancellation fee, at the end of the year, I will still have saved uh, about 500 bucks just by switching yeah. to Geico. Of course. And uh, <laughs> oh, after no. that, I'll be saving 1000 bucks every year. So this is all good news. Hmm. Um, so that's, that is all sorted. That is all great. And then yesterday I went out and, uh, not yesterday, a couple days ago, I went out and got a case and, uh, as, and I, I did go for a screen protector because now I can afford it. Yeah. And it, it feels great. I feel like I have a phone again. It feels uh, amazing. It feels like I'm not, I'm not constantly tied to the fucking wall because this thing has to be plugged in. Not bad. Now you can, it's like playing, it's like playing Blast Rush all over again. Right. Now I can play Blast Rush on iOS all over again in Japanese. Exactly. Right, check it out. Konnichiwa. <laughs> I don't think that's in the game. <laughs> Bakudashu. I, well, a little secret I put in there. No, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait <laughs> I saw your file. <laughs> the, the kids call it an Easter egg. <laughs> this, wait a minute. This all had to go through me first. <laughs> <laughs> you were asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you snuck in hello, it's not the worst thing in the world, I guess. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on. My fucking thing fell out. God damn it! Headphones, get in. Oh yeah, I also I also uh, splooged on some uh, Bluetooth headphones okay, for myself. Okay, I don't need to hear about that. <laughs> are, okay, are we just going to retire that word? What you splooge word? on is your business. Have we as a society, a society decided to retire that word because there's no way it doesn't sound like jizz now? Splooge, yes. Splurge, no. Which oh, is you're the right. Word oh my you God. were meaning to use. Wait, did I say splooge? Yes. Okay, this this might have been a Freudian slip situation. It definitely was. Because anyway. okay. <laughs> Wow, that's uh, okay. That's gonna. See, have to I came stay on in. some headphones. Go on. <laughs> I came upon some headphones that I wanted to buy. <laughs> good save, good save. And I decided to splurge on them. Thank uh, you. All right. Uh, <laughs> and they're they're great. The only downside is like it's kind of annoying every time I want to use them, having to go in and resync them every time. Is there a way? Because if what? I keep them, if I keep them synced all the time, doesn't that use up the battery? I mean, do they not have their own off switch? No, there's no switch. Really? What? These are seventy dollar uh, Bluetooth earbuds. I mean, I also have some Bluetooth earbuds that are not that much money, but there's a button you can hold and it'll turn off. Uh, uh. So if I hold the play button, they will turn on. Like you use that to sync them, but. I don't. I've never tried using that to turn there them off. Has to be a way to turn them off. Okay. That I, uh, was, I mean, that's like a general accepted, expected thing. Well, what's also really annoying is that they they unsync every time I plug them into charge. Okay, which, that's, which that's I, a different problem. Which I do when I get to work, so every day. That's also bad because the ones yeah. I have will just work no matter if it's plugged in or not. The well, same you way. know what? You live and you learn, and this is my first pair of bluetooth ear earbuds so i know what i'm getting into next time i mean that's fair i'm not gonna judge you about that i've already judged you plenty this episode so yes you're good at judging i've, I've had my fill you're but... putting the mental and judgmental y- mm-hmm. fun well that's my story okay <laughs> so we've had foot we've had and we've had phone. phone oh yeah i just want to say if anybody's living in japan or people are thinking of moving to japan Definitely explore the Rakuten Mobile uh, pathway because when you come over here with a company, your company is going to stick you with one of the big three carriers. My company uh, at the time, Nova, stuck me with SoftBank, and I just didn't try to get out of that. And it turns out oh, yeah. I, I wasted thousands of dollars over a decade. So, um, yeah, if you're coming over... With the company, maybe find out if there's some other options, or if maybe you can get out of whatever contract they put you in after the first year, or if if, if you have to stay with that. Yeah. Uh, at my wife's last job, they had like a website with a bunch of discounted services and things, and so we both got like thirty dollar T-Mobile plans. Hey. 
uh, just because, and you know, I didn't even really have to say I was part of her company because I wasn't, but <laughs> it was just like, oh, just go to this website and sign up and there you go. That's pretty good. Yeah. But, what kind uh, of data you got? Same as you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> the minimum possible. Pretty, pretty good. Oh, I just got a new email here. Breaking news. The App Store will soon accept Korean won. Wow. Okay, thanks. Looks like the consumer won with guess, that one. Guess you better get started on that Korean translation of Blast Rush, Alex. Oh, uh, no. I don't know Korean. Uh, now's the time to start. Okay. I'll pay you bafo bucks. Konnichi. No, shit. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Would it be great if all games just opened with hello? <laughs> Yes, well, they can't all be fucking, I don't know, Undertale or whatever. Does it do that? Uh, I don't think so. (laughs) Sounds like something it would do. Oh, (laughs) Hello. Welcome to Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha. (laughs) I'll show you how. (laughs) Oh, I wish. I think, you know, I had, I have been playing a fighting EX layer, which is the, the spiritual sequel. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a, it's a fun game. It doesn't say hello to you at the start, though. Oh. It does have a little information box in the corner of the menu saying, oh, here's our new patch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Please to enjoy it, or whatever. <laughs> they don't uh, much have much of an English staff on that. Thank you so much for playing my game. <laughs> uh, I don't like Italians. Hey. Hey. Martin A. Uh, our, what, let's take another quick break. I'm going to make some calls on my new iPhone SE. Okay, you're going to call me? I don't have anybody to call. Uh, oh. well, you, well, you have a wife. Uh, she is, I believe she is uh, out at an English lesson right now. I see. Uh, with our, our good friend uh, Alex. Alex, if you're listening, hi. Not me. It's This is this is female Alex. Okay, female Alex. Yes. Oh, uh, so we she also call her. Rui? Yeah, we also call her Futaba because she uh, looks exactly like Futaba. Oh yes, okay. Persona Five, which you'll play one day. I've seen that person. Yes, I get right. it. It totally works. Yeah, I uh, see. So she's your wife's teacher. That's cool. Yes. So uh, I guess I'll call you then. Nah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you already <laughs> have. Oh yeah, that's right. You're talking to me now. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. And as I explained to you before we recorded, um, now when you call me on Skype, I also get it on my phone because I have the Skype app. So it is <laughs> automatically tied to my phone. Um, that sucks. But I mean, nevertheless, you can call me pretty much whenever it, because of that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe I'll just start calling you out of the blue. Okay, great. We can watch Good Eats over the phone. Like we oh, used to. just like old times? Just like old times. Oh, good times. Oh, and with the I, power of the internet, we could watch virtually anything. I have I have a rich history of doing that. My um, my, my good pal Matt and I in high school, we used to call each other and watch uh, Cartoon Planet and Space Goes Coast to Coast together. Uh, of course you had been doing it for years. I mean, <laughs> you had experience. Why else would you bring it up to me? Because well, it's fun. Yeah. That was that was what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, All right. Break. Yes. Break. All right. Hang on. Uh, during the break, I have to what, grab pee, a, poop. Uh, number no. three. Number yeah, four. I have to gra- yeah, I have to grab my poo, Ray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get the three seashells. Ew. <laughs> We're back. It's no more whoppers. I'm Ray. That's Alex. And Alex, Hi. I just I wanted to apologize for when I sound fake angry. I want to sound fake angry, and it comes out real angry. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. You know the persona thing. Well, you know what? I, wait a minute. This is this is going somewhere, isn't it? 
No. You're setting up for a gag, aren't you? I'm not. Okay. Well, then I <laughs> want... Great improv. I want... <laughs> Is this an improv I want, gag? I want to not apologize for when I'm real angry, it's real angry. Oh. Uh, but when I'm fake angry, that's that's pretty fake angry. <laughs> yeah, Although that's sometimes, true. sometimes it's not obvious, and I'm working on that. Right. No! Uh, whoa. <laughs> How do you hold fucking pistols in your feet? I don't. I'm, I'm anti-foot pistol. Was that real angry? What? That, oh. the, the, the. that was me expressing legitimate frustration at a at a gaming thing, yes. <laughs> okay. We'll I, just you know see what? about that. You know, you know what? The lines are so blurred, I don't know anymore. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, <laughs> who, who can tell anymore? Uh, Enjoy your coffee and your dreams, jerk off. We've gone so deep into it, into your we psyche, have. especially. Yeah, I'm... Over the years... This is like a, like a being John Malkovich situation. <laughs> I'm just I'm just so like my my own identity is is suspect. Yeah, it's a cartoon. It's a fantasy land. Yes, it's a cartoon from Japan. I think it's called anime. Okay, right? The cartoon from Japan. I guess they're called anime. Yes, they are. I'll check it out. You got Ranma. That's uh, they couldn't afford the G for grandma, <laughs> so they called it Ranma one half. Uh, you got. <laughs> Evangelical bots. Uh, you got the uh, dragon fruit GT. Hold on. I'm stalling <laughs> grandma. <laughs> uh, that was good. Uh, uh, you get the Shingeki no Gaijin. That's a good one. That's a popular one. All right, Alex. Fun piece. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone could be gay. You could be gay. <laughs> done and done. <laughs> and I mean done. Uh, so here's the fun part. This is not really fun, but it's good news. Um, this is wow. big <laughs> fucking news. <laughs> uh, I met with a lawyer a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, and here's how the meeting went down. Um, this this is right. a No More Whoppers exclusive. <laughs> Uh, except for the people that I've told already. All right. Do you want me to play a part or anything? Or um, just just be you. You do you. you do All right. You. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go through uh, the list of crazy uh, hairbrained ideas that I had and his responses to them. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> some of them are pretty good. I just yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Hit me. All right. Hit us. So here's I, I went to see the the copyright lawyer with my accountants a couple days ago, and we went into this uh, office. It's a, it's a beastly hot day, of course. Uh, we go up to the, their, their office on the fifth floor uh, into a very uh, uh, ornate uh, air-conditioned office. We have a seat on a couch. We wait for a couple minutes, and then we meet with a guy who kind of looks like um, he... Uh, who's the Japanese dude from Heroes? Hero. <laughs> yeah, he looks like... He, well, yeah, that's his character's name, but I, I, I don't, don't know the actor's oh, name. yeah. Something, something. There we go. Yeah, uh, so he looks, he looks like something, something. Uh, kind of a n- n- nice, nice guy with glasses, uh, and, and we, we sit down and introduce ourselves. And I, I tell him like, I, I have to be careful because I can't just open with "I have a video game bar," because <laughs> like I don't at, th- at this point I don't know who I can really trust, and I don't know that oh. this guy's n- not going to turn around and tell the government, "Hey, this guy has a video game bar." Yeah, push the silent alarm. Yeah. Uh, so what I said was, I have a video game museum bar that I would like to put game consoles in. How can I go about doing that? All righty. I, I, yeah, that's, I guess that's a good way to approach it. So my my first question was about uh, handhelds. Are are handhelds okay if people bring their own, you know, Game Boy, PSP, DS, etc.? And the answer was obviously yes. That's fine. Yeah. Um. I also I brought up because I have a I have a Superboy, which is a, a third party uh, Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom unit. That's right. Uh, and there there are also Famicom equivalents of that. And I asked him, "What about those? Because those are also handhelds. <laughs> could, could, I, could I just have uh, some of those in there? That way, people can still play Famicom Super Famicom games." That was an overwhelming no. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, yeah, like why why on earth would Nintendo be okay with uh, unlicensed third party uh, hardware? They wouldn't. Exactly. Uh, my next crazy idea 
Well, uh, this was actually the uh, the second, the front runner uh, after the one that the idea that we went with. Uh, what if I became a school? Okay. Yes. Remember, I brought right. I brought that up last episode. Exactly. And he said, "Okay, uh, in theory, yes, uh, fair use of copyright would apply to you as a school, but uh, guess what? You will have to write a textbook. You will have to <laughs> make up a curriculum." Yeah. You will have to charge people for lessons. So, yeah, it is possible. Uh, it would also be an in, in intense and insane amount of work. Um, but you know what? It sounds like I, I know from experience and, and from, from the people that I know that uh, teaching English and making your own textbook are both uh, highly lucrative things if you're, if you're working privately. So mm. maybe maybe if the bar is not doing so hot in the future, or if I get tired of it, maybe I will do that, the teaching idea, because I have experience in teaching, and I have a lot of experience in games, or, or in, you know, like, playing games. So that's a thing that I could possibly All explore. Right. We'll put that on the maybe pile. Okay. No, but why is the textbook such a crucial part of that? I mean... Uh, I, I, you I just, guess... Couldn't you just use an existing textbook well, for no, it, that sort it's, of material? It, it's because there no textbook exists for what I want to do, which is but, uh, teaching uh, English to Japanese people with video games. I understand, but if you're teaching English, you still have some material to work from in an existing textbook that would teach similar concepts. Yeah, but know. in order I'm for sorry. me, I'm just I'm just wondering about what he was saying, not what, what you're he well, to do. well, what he was saying was in in order to to prove. Um, that I, you know, that I deserve to use these video games under fair use. I would also, I would have to prove that they are a key component of the course. I, I, yeah, I get of, it. It's of just the silly. text. Yeah. Oh, it is silly. This is this yeah. is insane. This is nobody has done these things before. That's what no. makes this both exciting and well, horrifying. Yeah. It's a first this, time for everything. This is just an idiot groping around blindly in a room looking for something to help me stand yeah. up. Look, I said we'd put it in the maybe pile. I think you should just do that right now. Oh, oh no. Just do that Wait a one. minute. No, Ray. Yeah. No. Just write the textbook. We've um, all seen them. Yeah. I, I, the next I asked him about uh, homebrew and indie titles, uh, he said, uh, as long as it's not under copyright. Uh. So that makes sense. Uh, and I also then asked him about, well, what about uh, American releases of Japanese games? Like, I, I brought him a, 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 a Japanese Super Famicom, Super Mario World, and an American Super Nintendo Super Mario World to show him, like, hey, look, wow. this is the American cartridge. What if, I, <laughs> what, what if I just have this one and not this one? Yeah, that's cute. And um, he, he the gave Mario me... Brothers. He kind of uh, elaborated on his previous point about the, the homebrew and indie games, and he, he, he just said, well... Here's here's the simple truth. Uh, American copyright extends to Japan. So really, anything that you do in Japan related to software copyright, uh, it, if, even if it's an American-only copyrighted thing, it will also apply. So, yeah. Feels like a bit of a non-answer, though. Like, no, it was pretty... <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, okay, well, your gist of it. Uh, I, I I know you weren't I wasn't there but <laughs> I don't think it's a non-answer I just think it's a sh it's a shitty conclusion. Okay, I just that yeah. um like because my my example was um Secret of Evermore which was not released in Japan. What if I you know I I have a copy of Secret of Evermore that was designed yeah, uh, I mean developed yeah. and published in America by the American arm of Square. But it's not under Japanese copyright. Can I still play that? The answer is no, because it's right. under American copyright. Well, I'm sure legally still the copyright is held by the parent company. So that's true. But Square uh, Enix Company Limited probably owns it, truthfully. Yeah, but uh, even things like um, certain homebrew titles. Uh, I think my oh yeah, I brought in a copy of the uh, Battle Kid too, because uh, the the dude uh, was nice enough to. Uh, Come down to the bar and, yeah. you know. That has to be copyrighted, though. <laughs> it is. It absolutely yeah. is. But that's that's the thing, though, is that, like, the the guy who made the games himself <laughs> is going to give me a copy of the remake to put in the bar for people to play. Yeah. And yet, legally, under the law, I'm not allowed to do that. You're right. 
even though the guy who literally slaved over a hot keyboard for for months and and years to make these games said, take this game, put it in the bar, let people enjoy it. Yeah. The law is still like, nope. Right. Well, it's the same thing. You know, I could tell you, Alex, you can have giant TVs that play nothing but Blast Rush all day, but you'll probably get arrested for it. (laughs) Yeah. Even though not only... uh, (laughs) Did I tell you you could do it? But your work is in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, but but when respects, that happens. You did help make that game. <laughs> but when that happens, I really hope it's, open up, police. Hey, is that Blast Rush? <laughs> <laughs> sure. And then it's like yeah, a whole bunch wait. of a whole bunch of dudes sitting around playing Blast Rush. Uh, yeah, right. Um, oh, uh, I floated the idea of what, what if the place was members only and it was a private establishment. And uh, the answer to that is that is okay, except yeah. members only uh, places typically are supposed to have a limit to the number of members that they allow. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, to keep it exclusive. Yeah, but what kind of limit? Um, he said, like, I would have to start with like 20 members. I'm like, that's not enough customers to okay. keep me going. All right. Yeah. Like, well, tough. Like, that's how members clubs operate, is they're just. Stupid, expensive, but there's a limited clientele. Yeah, you know when you, when you feel like you're part of an exclusive thing, you're more willing to spend money on it. Sure, sure. Uh, I asked him, "Is it okay to stream things?" Because I show people streaming on Twitch all the time. Uh, the answer was yes. That's surprisingly okay. Mm. Um, as long as they're official releases. If they are like what? if <laughs> like a ROM, a ROM hack is no good. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Why? What's what's the laughter? No, no, I just I just laugh at the you know the particular the particulars of it. I understand it, but it's just like you know yeah. sometimes it's like you could just switch over to an official game if you wanted. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I asked. So this this was uh, I I I've never been so nearly laughed out of a room as I was when I asked oh, this boy. next question. Okay. Uh, and that is, um, hey, if I want to license the rights to these games, can't I just ask the companies directly? Mm. And the answer is no. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's one of the shittier things, is that the language that the ACCS was using when they issued their press release and when they talk about these arrests and things, their language makes it sound like there is a way, there is some channel towards actually licensing copyright to these games because it's always phrased like you know you 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 cannot have these these titles without acquiring the appropriate uh software uh copyright license et cetera et cetera yeah oh well which I which mean... sounds which sounds like there's a way to do it it might be a very expensive way but still there's a way to do it and yeah. i talked to the lawyer and he's just like no that's no that's not a thing well you don't know if you don't ask so. yeah and now yeah. we know it's it's uh, my my example when I explain this to my my uh, friends was like I want I want to pay hey, Disney I want to put your fun cartoon mouse on this phone case I'm making on fucking Etsy how do how do I license that it's like you you don't you just don't yeah but you're not mass producing game bars either so. no but it's it's the same but it's the same idea of like I'm I'm taking uh, somebody's copyrighted image and and using it for my own business. Mm-hmm. I also inquired about um, what's the deal with uh, developers who are out of business who no longer hold copyright on the things that they've made. Uh, that was also mm. surprisingly no. <laughs> because as it turns out, um, the vast majority of companies that go out of business are then purchased by other companies yeah. who then own those copyrights. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Especially in video games. There's there's always some way to trace them. Yeah. Trace who, who holds who's the holding company. Uh, all right. Well, we're we're coming down uh, this the the top ten list that we started uh, last episode. Right. We're coming down to the number one uh, that we actually went with, which we did not discuss last week because I didn't know it was an option. Oh, okay. Um, Good. So yeah, I'm I'm going through all my dumb ideas, uh, and, and as I'm doing so, the lawyer just kind of interrupts me and goes. Hey, Shut up for a second. What if, what if, hear me out, um, what if you just became a used game shop? And I'm like, well, can I still sell drinks? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. And people can play anything they want. Yeah, yeah, of course they can. I'm like, how? 
and I like I, I realized like yeah when I when I go shopping in Osu a lot of the places have uh, demo TVs you can try and yeah. I thought I just thought they were getting away with something illegal I didn't realize there there was a provision for used software for used game stores that they are allowed to let people demo the games before they buy them okay yeah because I know uh, Makoya and Super Potato each have uh, you know screens that you can play games on yeah they all do and I was like I was in disbelief because like this it's I was very very cautious because this seemed to just perfectly solve every problem that I had and yeah. I was in, <laughs> immediately suspicious like what's the catch no and shit. he's like yeah He's like, well, you're going to have to pay um, uh, the local government a fee to uh, to get a business license. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, jeez. Okay, well, how much is that going to be? And uh, my the guy's like, ah, it could be as much as uh, 200,000 yen. And I'm like, holy shit, it's probably 200,000 yen a month, isn't it? And he's like, no, it's just a one-time fee. I'm like, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious right now? Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. And then I got an email from my accountant yesterday that said, actually, it's closer to just 100000 so that's even better. What in the hell? That's, that's um, crazy. Yeah, yeah. and uh, to, to that end, I've set up a Critical Hit uh, Extra Life uh, tip box at the bar if anyone yeah, wants yeah, to yeah. Uh, throw a couple bucks in there. It's, a, it's only been up for two days, and it's already got about 65 bucks in it, so I'd say we're, we're, making, some good, we're making a good dent. So, okay, you get a business license uh, yes. to classify you as a... Uh, used game, game shop yeah re- yes yeah. Uh, now there are some complications here as you would imagine yeah uh, i am going to have to go through my entire collection and price all of them now the best way to do this i think is just look up what the market price is and just double or triple it because i don't <laughs> want people buying my collection aha uh-huh. yeah. mm-hmm. um, yes but you know what if they do if they insist like yeah i'll sell you this grossly inflated copy of sonic adventure uh-huh. uh, you know and then i with with that insane markup i can just go buy a new one so um, I'm going to have to price everything. We have to go through hundreds upon hundreds of games and uh, decide on prices. And I have to have uh, a catalog that people can look through with the prices in them. I have to have some kind of a pricing list that's readily available. Okay. Beyond that, you have no obligation to like change your, um, your space. You don't have to like move into a more germane sort of... <laughs> Retail space. No, no, because... Um, you can basically just have a bar with price stickers all over. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, you know what? I didn't ask that question specifically, and now that's a question I want to ask. But I feel like um, when I brought up the the question of, can I still sell drinks? And he said, yes. I took yeah. that as, as sort of a, a tacit admission of, oh, you'll, you're fine where you are. But we'll we'll see. I mean, I hope I don't have to move because that's that's that would cost a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, also like, yeah, you you might have to keep up appearances at some point, um, right? Maybe not immediately after, but like you may have to like get a bunch of games more wholesale or something, and actually do sell some to people. Well, <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe that's if I have to sell new games like i mean i could always just stock like the bare minimum it's like how um, i don't mean new i don't yeah anything yeah i meant just you know buy a lot on an auction yeah. or something yeah. it's it's like how uh japanese uh porn rental places there's a japanese law that says a certain per- if you are if you rent out uh you know tapes or dvds or blu-rays a certain percentage of your stock must be non-porn okay so yeah. that's that's why you, you uh and and you have to like you have to also devote that much space to advertising the non-porn so that's why when you go when you huh. ride past a, a japanese porn shop in the window you'll you'll see fucking top gun like okay <laughs> okay i haven't seen that but yeah I mean, I that, that movie's partially porn anyway so mm-hmm. yeah uh, it's kind of like that. It's like I, I may have to devote a certain amount of shelf space to new titles, and even if I do, like that's that's whatever. It's fine. Yeah, I'll be I'll be I'll be your your local neighborhood retailer. Sure, whatever. Y'all got that yakuza? <laughs> now the other downside is that um, I, I I I was I specifically asked about this and was given a very specific answer, so it's pretty clear. Okay. Uh, I can't have any. Uh, not not that I can't, but it's very dicey. To have hardware with a hard drive on it, 
um, because yeah. uh, because I can't sell digital downloads to people. That's something they have to buy themselves. So I can't let anybody play games on a machine that can play downloaded things. Because uh-huh. yeah, like it, 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 yeah. But if you have to sell a PS4 game and you have, want to have it on a TV, you can have the display TV with the PS4, right? So you kind of need a PS4 if you were going to end up selling a new game. I think the only... Uh, maybe if I were to just go through the hard drive and delete every game that I did not have a physical copy of, it would be okay. Yeah, and or just buy a new PS4 that you don't do anything with. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Something like that, yeah, sure. Yeah. A lot of fun. Um... Okay, any more details on that? Uh, that's that's pretty much the long and short okay. of it. I'm, so uh, I do want to ask hi, what is probably the obvious question. Yes. Uh, why has no one else tried this? This is a great question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I've talked to... Uh, I, I, uh, this this person is, 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 I think, trying to keep things on the, on, on right. the DL. You don't have to use real names. I'm not... Okay, let's, let's call him uh, Baphomet. Okay. Uh, the dark Good. one. All right, great. That was no. the black sarcophagus, yeah. Y- yes. <laughs> yeah. So this this guy told me that that the video game bars were floating that idea around, but nobody was sure about the validity of it. And apparently, I'm the first person to go to a lawyer and say, "Hey, is this legal?" And to be told, "Uh, yeah, sure." Okay. All right. Well, let me also ask again, and I uh, either I'll cut this out or bleep it. But uh, is who is this person you're talking to? Uh, it is uh, Mr. Black. All right. Well, I mean, I guess the point is, is that you were the one who did the work of exploring yeah. all the options, well, going to the right people, and getting an answer. That's whether or that's, not it, uh-huh. you were laughed out or whatever. Nonetheless, you seem to have <laughs> a good enough idea that you can act on. And yeah, that I think is a success. Here's yeah, the thing uh, about video game, but well, the thing about Japan is the Japanese uh, uh, culture. There's a, a there's a little too much emphasis on just accepting a decision, and just yeah, a- okay. accepting yeah. that you're screwed. Um, if you've ever studied Japanese, you've you've heard the phrase shogunai, which means it can't be helped. Also, never translate it that way if you're making a game. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, oh yeah. Japanese people like to throw around the phrase shogunai um, in when a decision has been made that is is sort of considered to be above their heads or something they have no control over. Uh, yeah, but you know, when I, I, in a no, in a lot of cases, that's not like you can do something. Yeah, I know of course. There's not a lot you can do, but like, it's depressing to see this attitude of like, well, fuck me, I guess I'm done. I mean, if you're the Japanese guy who, you know, gets out of the rat race, essentially, to open up your little bar in the middle of Tokyo with games, and then you just kind of, like, under the threat of legal action, just be like, well, I guess this is the fate I've had for me, so I'll just uh, stick around and try to make it as a regular bar. Like, Yeah. <laughs> Like I, I feel bad. That I can't that's, believe people. No. I just I, I know it's a cultural thing. I just can't believe people were so easy to accept their fate in such a way. Yes, it's a uh, when feel they like, did all the great work already. Is what I mean. If you're look, if anyone's in localization and you're looking for a good way to translate shogunai, uh, one possible option would be well, <laughs> down I go. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um. I yeah. It's. It, like I can understand the the shogunai mindset if you're within a company, like yeah. if your if if your superior makes a decision a decision that it's impossible for anybody to appeal that that's a shogunai situation. That's like well the boss decided it, so we have to do it. Yeah, but like a, a an industry that's barely I'm gonna say barely thirty years old, where the law is gray in a lot of areas that nobody's really explored yet. Yeah. Maybe these other things that we can try here. Yeah, and if you're a small business owner in control of your own destiny, why not? <laughs> I'm a tall business owner, but thank you. <laughs> yes, you are. Thank you. Uh, you know, why not look for an option? That's Why not that's ECC? <laughs> no, wait. Yeah. Uh, and uh I I talked to my uh my buddy Dallas at the bar uh a couple of days ago. Uh Dallas is his nickname. He's a, he's a Japanese dude who's severely into gangster rap. Okay. Um, I asked him, or no, he asked me the other day, 
well, what are you going to do? Are you going to close? And I'm like, no, I'm going to meet with a lawyer. And he, his response was just, wow, how American. <laughs> I'm like, it well, should that. Um, like, I'm not going to sue Nintendo. Like, <laughs> I'm just going. What is wrong with knowing about what your rights are and what your options are? Like, yeah, that's not, that yeah. should not be a distinctly American thing. That should be a thing that anybody yeah. should have the the uh, availability or the opportunity to do. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's for sure. Like, lawyers are not just about suing. It's I. The most depressing thing is this Japanese mindset that like laws. Are logs logs? Right. <laughs> I love a good log. It's yeah. big. It's heavy. It's wood. <laughs> laws only. The mindset of uh, laws only exist in Japan to protect corporations, uh, and and people are just here to serve them and to buy their products and to participate in their new campaign. <laughs> yes. it, it's like here's your role uh-huh. in society. You get a job. You work till you die, and you buy a whole a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, that that's a model Japanese citizen because you're 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 working for your your corporate overlords and you're also feeding into the economy by by, by buying a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, I just feel like you know like, like Dallas, he doesn't sound like a model citizen necessarily. He sound he got over the hump uh, to to some degree because you know he likes gangster rap. Oh, no, no, and no, yeah, I'm not. Bar, but I, I'm not. I'm not saying no, no, he uh, thinks like that. I'm just saying. No, no, that, I don't. I'm not either. Response. I'm just saying people okay. like that. Again, like I. Yeah. I, I was thinking of the people in Tokyo, especially who, you know, they started like those first bars and stuff. It's just like, no, that's, that's it Dal- for you, really? Like, Dallas is, is pretty, um, he's, he's certainly more, uh, I'd say Americanized than, than a typical Japanese person. Sure. Okay. As in, he's, he's into hardcore rap. Uh, he only drinks Budweiser when he comes to the bar. <laughs> um, I believe he's the only person in Japan who bought an Xbox. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he he was well, a big he was a big, Japanese. Yeah. He was a big proponent of the Xbox. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that's that's pretty much uh, it. Did you have any any other questions? Yes, you there. No, just me more. You know, rubbing my temples, being like, yeah, I can't believe some people. Yeah. But I am glad that you know. Again, you have an option, and it's not yes. prohibitively expensive. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it's it's only slightly expensive. I guess we will see how it goes from here. Yes. Um, in the meantime, would you have any? I'm sure someone listening is going to want to help out and give you money. Is there any alternative means to give you money? Well, that yeah, that's um, I've had at least ten people already suggest some kind of uh, crowdfunding thing online, and I've I've never really used one for this purpose. I used Patreon briefly for ten and ten, but that was right. like a, a monthly thing. Um, I don't know which of those screws you out the least that I can go with. Uh, I, I don't know which one is the safest. Well, do you, have you ever used any? Of, well, you have you used Kickstarter, right? I yes, but I don't think either of them are necessarily used to basically seed a business. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not. It's not that. It's like helping the business keep going into its next form. I mean, there are. Yeah, I mean, there's crowdfunding sites which are for you know a project. Okay. Um, if you framed it properly, sure. But there's also like general like what about, fundraiser sites. What about go fund yourself? Is that a good one? It's 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 it doesn't exist. <laughs> oh shit. What about go fuck me? Is that a good one? <laughs> yes. All right. I think you I think it's like I think Facebook does it now. You can oh, start really? a fundraiser <gasps> on Facebook. You're right. I saw my aunt doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Where the ants are. <laughs> um if you want ants cuz this is how you get ants. Well, if anybody has any uh, uh, recommendations on any which money? of those services is the best, I will set one up immediately, and I'll yeah. accept uh, any bucks that you might have. Yeah. Um, I don't even know the legality of those things in Japan. I may have to set this up with my American uh, bank account and then just transfer it to my Japanese account when it's done. Yeah, that might be a whole different can of worms, but I mean, eh, like with, just, I think... Oh. It depends. If it was Facebook, then maybe you could tie it easily. I have no idea uh-huh. how it works, but maybe. Because um, I know, PayPal, like, you know, will accept foreign currencies. So. J- Japan has been very uh, down on a lot of uh, foreign uh, businesses. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, just shit, not crowdfunding, but like shit that people do. Uh, shit, my dad says. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, like um, uh, Uber or Airbnb, like things yeah. that rely on the average person. Oh yeah, I mean Jesus Christ, the Airbnb thing sounds almost like this copyright shit, basically. It's yeah, like the same um, sort of bullshit. 
Uh, so hang on a sec. I was uh, a dude uh, named Liam. Liam Edwards came to the bar last week to do an interview for a YouTube series that I'm looking up here. It's called Super Bunny Hop. Oh, okay, yeah. You familiar with that? Yes, Pete, yes. Okay. It's uh, fairly known. Okay, so I'm going to be on one of those, and Liam came to the bar to record. He was a super nice guy. We had a lot of fun. He actually he uh, worked at uh, GTA Five when he was at Rockstar, and I got him to sign my copy, which is kind of neat. worked at GTA Five. Yeah, yeah, he worked at the company, GTA Five Kabushiki Gaisha. <laughs> No, he was. Uh, he's, he said he uh, he started out as QA and then he became a, uh, a mission designer for GTA Five at Rockstar, which is kind of cool. Right. Cool. Uh, so he came. He's a super nice guy, and we hung out for a bit. Um, so I'm gonna go into detail about. Well, it. Uh, I don't know if, if the final thing is gonna include uh, everything I've said here today because it was recorded before the lawyer meeting. Okay. Uh, but you can you can you can check that out uh, there. So some of you're saying some of your sillier ideas may remain. Yeah, yeah, uh, those will probably be there. I don't know when that is going to be out, but uh, that that that's a fun opportunity to see me on camera. Okay. Yeah. Not Did we just get to on... see your mangled foot. Uh, no, that was right. uh, hidden by a refrigerator, uh, right. which made it more mangled. I should not have put the refrigerator on the foot. No. Also pretty cold. Yeah, but fridge fresh. foot. Yes, you might say I got cold feet. Ah. Uh, Alex is a funny man. <laughs> so yeah, things are things are slowly coming along. Uh, it's going to cost some months, but uh, I think if people Have are willing Olivia to help variety? out, yes. Oh, she's she was, she was Psylocke. She was great. <laughs> right. Yeah. Where were we? I don't know. Okay. Well, I've lost track. I, I think I, I've covered everything I wanted to cover. A thousand bucks. Uh, can I get into uh, the G1 Climax that's going down? Oh, is this wrestling again? Yeah. All right. I'll be going. <laughs> Just do your thing. No, I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm not. Oh. Raymond. Uh. Okay. First of all, I'm kidding. I mean, oh. if I can talk about arcade games. Yeah. I I would be like uh, <laughs> right, Homer. You can talk about it. I would be like a Homer leaving his body at the cider mill. Oh, yeah, I can do that, too. <laughs> Watch me collapse. <laughs> it's oh. jungle out there. No, I'm, I'm not going to go on at length about a topic. Uh, I'm not going to talk at you is what I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, I, you all, may have no choice. <laughs> all I'm going to... No, all I'm going to all I'm gonna say is um, I was disappointed that... Uh, uh, we, we had an opportunity to see an event in Nagoya and we didn't know about it until it was too late. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because uh, the G1 Climax is like a month long event of like, it's just wrestling almost every day for a month. It's insane. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and so they kind of tour around Japan going to different places. And um, one, one of the, uh, the ones last Saturday was at the uh, Aichiken uh, Taikukan, which is right next to Nagoya Castle, which I can see from my apartment. <laughs> Okay. So yeah. So walking distance. Well, no, it's just a just a clear view. Okay. So hiking distance. Yeah, hiking distance. Uh, yeah. If I if I took my bike, it'd probably uh, be maybe twenty minutes shorter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, maybe next time. So you missed some wrestling. That's too bad. Yeah, and um, so my I guess hour. I say hour. I mean like uh, me and Tom, because Tom Tom's the one who kind of got me into it. Um. After his his friend Whitney went back to live in America, and they were wrestling pals, they would they would watch wrestling, they would go to wrestling, and then Whitney left, and Tom's like, "Alex, you want to be my new wrestling pal?" I'm like, uh, "Okay." Do you think they also watched wrestling over the phone? Uh, do they were best friends? No, I think they all, they just did it in person. Oh, because they're best friends. There was a callback to our thing. I know, Ray. Sorry, I still love you. Uh, but. Yeah, so it's uh, it's Tom got me into wrestling, and we uh, we w really wanted to go to an event, but unfortunately that was not uh, possible this time. But our our favorite dude, uh, his name is Kenny Omega. He's from Winnipeg. He used to be a hockey player. Uh, his real name is Tyson Smith. I know too much about this man. Okay, true. Uh, he is. Uh, uh, I'm not going to go into severe detail. Just going to say that his his storyline has, has been really interesting and, and kind of fun to watch. He seems to have the momentum of a runaway freight train. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Ray. 
Uh, he's also really into games. Uh, his, his Twitter handle is Kenny Omega Man. He was X. Cody. He was Cody in that uh, Street Fighter thing. He he likes to play Street Fighter. He just did an ad uh, with his partner Kota Ibushi for a wrestling game. Cody and Cody. Yes, thank you. Yes, Co- <laughs> Cody Ibushi. Um, he's generally uh, his his finishing move is called One Winged Angel. Oh boy, he has a special move called he has a special move called V Trigger. What a bunch of nerds! Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of game references. Um, and I I messaged him on on Twitter uh, months and months ago and said, hey. Uh, I have a small video game bar in, in Nagoya. I don't, I don't know when you're going to be in town next, but uh, please come on by. And he said, "I don't know when I'll be in town next either, but I'd All love right. to." And now you can... And then he was in. And then he was in town next, and yeah. he didn't come. But I guess it's because, uh, like, he just won his match that night. He was the last match. He was the main event. He was exhausted, and he was just like covered in sweat. These these guys come out pre covered in sweat, so I don't right. know what the deal is. Uh, but it's, I, I understand if he was just too exhausted to stop by, but would you have should, been really cool. Should. Hope you can make it sometime. You know what? You got to make something else for them to, to come. You got to make like a, you know, like that, that steakhouse that the wrestlers go to in Japan. You got to oh, make yeah. like a jacket, make like a critical hit jacket a, a, that you can give to them and they can okay. wear in photos and stuff. And then you'll be known okay. as, you know, we got to go get the critical hit jacket. And then you'll be okay. known as, you know, a new place, a new hot happen and place for wrestlers to go. Oh, okay. What about, um, what if I make a jacket out of steak? I mean, that'd probably work too. Um, right? That would definitely get you in the papers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cause like, what was it? Lady Gaga had the meat yeah. dress. I could just turn this into a whole industry, just just meat meat based uh, okay. well, meat wear. Yeah, let's not go too crazy. Let's wait until you're fully about to get deported. Okay. <laughs> How much I is show, a business license show, for meat uh, fashion? <laughs> I show up. I show up to my hearing in just a, a suit made of meat. I straighten my meat tie and I squish down into the chair. I uh, love it. All right. Well, that's uh, that's tales from that. That's foot fo- foot phone and fun. <laughs> <Great>. uh, <laughs> well, you know, the other thing is that now you can tell Kenny Omega that uh, you uh, he should come to your uh, video game shop that you sell drinks in. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I think legally that's how yeah. I have to promote the place now. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot call it a bar. Uh, it is just a. It is a. It is a Tuko game we on. It's a used game shop. That's that's uh. You know, I, I heard GameStop is staring down bankruptcy. They're probably going to add some sort of drinking. They could oh yeah, do that pretty soon. Game slosh. <laughs> yes. Game slop. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I also I want to use this opportunity to say how much I hate the word barcade. Oh sure, yeah, well. Because I've that word's come up a lot recently when people are like, "Yeah, I heard a lot of a lot of barcades are in trouble." I'm like this, no, stop, stop. stop. That's not uh, what this is. First of all, I think it was a trademark name of a place called. Oh, Barcade. really? Well, then if people keep using it, then it's got won't Kleenexed. Be much longer. Yep. Yeah, Xeroxed. Kleenexed. Um, I, well, yeah, I'm list. I'm listing more okay. of them. What else you got? Uh, Styrofoam. Nice glad bag. <laughs> uh, did, did dumpster. No, oh, yeah, dumpster. Coke. Yeah, especially in yeah. the South. That I will never understand why everybody in the South refers to all soda like, as Coke. Who, who knows? It's, it's, They've had uh, weird things done to their it's brains. It's so dumb. It's like if I was inviting you to my house to play Halo, and I'm like, you want to play Mario? Like, Are you dumb? What is wrong with you? <laughs> okay, but <laughs> realistically, people <laughs> have called all video games Nintendo. Yeah, That's true. So. But st- yeah, but still, like <laughs> you don't have to drill down so no. much as to call. I do. Halo Mario. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, all right, fine. Heard that Liam guy worked on Sonic. He, yes, uh, uh, Grand Theft Sonic yeah. Five. Did you play the new Sonic? I am looking stuff forward yet? to. No, I've oh, not okay. had. I've Sorry. not had time. Ever, ever since I removed uh, the PS4 from the bar, I have not really played I, I, sh- I don't even use my ps4 at home either and i should because it's there but you said okay. it's only five bucks the dlc yeah man okay yeah i should get that because i really did like sonic mania anyway you were saying 
what you were looking uh, forward no, to? No, I'm just looking forward to. Uh, we got uh, folks. We got in in oh, just a yeah. month. We got DQ11 coming out in English. Um, oh yes, kind of looking forward to that. Yeah, um, I technically then have a month to finish seven. <gasps> How far are you? It's really hard to tell. <laughs> I'm, I think, fifty hours in. Which oh, okay. Well, yeah. for me, that was about halfway. Yeah, I know some people who beat it in like eighty or seventy-ish hours. Okay. Well, 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 where are you? Sto- where are you story-wise? I just went. I just finished up the island that had the uh, the the goddess statue crap, with the church up on the mountain. Uh oh yeah okay. You had to keep going back and forth through this fucking cave. Fun. The caves guy are, who broke the cool. goddess statue and uh, yeah. Oh that's right yeah 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 yeah. All right you're 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 getting there you're you're good you're solid way through. Apparently there's a fragment in like the sunken citadel, but I can't get through there. I don't know how to make any progress in that place. It's only like, you know, two rooms. Uh, I can't help you. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this not the helpline? Blame yourself or God. <laughs> All right. Yeah, fine. Give me give me another question. I'll be your helpline. Okay. How do I get the flute in Zelda? Uh, well, which Zelda, dum dum? The first one. Okay, man, I was hoping you could say Ocarina because that's an easy one. Uh, it's 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 in one of the dungeons. You go in. There's um, you're gonna see doors and you're gonna get a key. I don't know where you get. Like, it depends. You, it's different. Are you, are you just saying this off the top of your head? I thought yeah. you had like binders, like in the wizard. What? Yeah, like binders of information to look through, like in oh, the wizard. Oh yeah, no the the kid the kid's getting the binder. I'm just <laughs> I'm doing it off the top of my head while he, while think. we wait for him. I'm going to say it's in dungeon number uh, uh, five. Yeah. Okay, good. You know, I think I knew that much. Okay, yeah. So you go into, the thing. Go into dungeon five and hit hit uh, beasts with your weapon until one of them drops keys, or more than one key, um, and then go through the locked doors. Right. And you're going to eventually come to an underground place with bats in it, and you're going you're gonna to see the flute there. Right. Now, the thing about the flute is get this shit. You got to equip it. And then when you press the button, uh, Link will play the flute. And it, it goes... <laughs> and depending on where you use it, different things will happen. You can, is you the can binder use it. there yet? Um, no, he, it's on like the seventh floor, and this is the sub-basement. So And the elevator's broken, so it's going to be a while. And you can use the flute at the one of the fairy ponds, and it'll drain it, and that's how you get into level six also you can use it you, there's like weird circular pudding eye things that kind of float around the room if you use it then then they'll split into smaller ones and then you can attack them with your sword um so that's the flute yeah do you know if they're making street fighter three uh my uncle works at capcom and he says yes but okay but you work at nintendo i thought maybe you would know uh, no, no. Well, we we just uh, we just published the game uh, in in America. We didn't actually develop it. It's a it's a there's a company called uh, Capsule Computing based in uh, uh, Osaka, uh, and they they do street fighting and Mage Man and all those fun ones. Mage Man, I never heard of that. He's good. He's a little blue robot boy who shoots uh, beams. No, that's Mega Man. Are you what? dyslexic? Hang on. Oh, my, my binder's upside down. There we go. Mega Man. No, then it would be... <laughs> <laughs> Are you actually doing it? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm not going to put my brain through that. Oh. Uh, Jesus. Anyway, uh, thanks for calling the Nintendo uh, hot tip line for hot tips. Uh, I've been Steve, uh, glad I could help you today, sir. Okay, well, you didn't really. I told you where to get the fucking flute. That's sort of, I'm well, still stuck. Yeah. why didn't you follow my directions? Yeah. Do you have any Mortal Kombat stuff? Uh, down, up, left, left, A, right, down. <laughs> uh, well, I shouldn't tell this for the Genesis version, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just call me a dullard? <laughs> no, no, sir, I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> down a d- down. <laughs> well, 
Um, no, I think it's the end of the show, maybe. Is it? Oh, man, I want to give you more tips on the hot new games. Okay. <laughs> I can echo the dolphin. Uh, Never mind. Keep going, then. For invincibility. Just pause the game right. and press up and reset. And then you yank the cartridge out. Hey, I had another critical hit question. What's that? If people donate you money, does that mean we have to do another segment where you talk about them? Uh, the answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, a thousand times yes <laughs> That will definitely be a segment on the show <laughs> Oh man I should do it for people who donate uh, At the bar too Because I, I know who's donated so far So far it's been Jeremy, Sayaka Drew, Dwayne And I think that's it Fab, Fab bold, <laughs> whisk, all uh yeah yeah we should we should do a little shout out for the people who are trying to keep critical hit alive yeah keep hit going yeah I, I, how <laughs> much got. how much do you think I would have to pay Dave Coulier to to do an, an ad where he says keep hit going in the way that he says cut it out probably a few business licenses worth oh shit really what's he doing these days. It doesn't matter what he's doing, it's what he values his own professional work and effort for. I, Jeez, uh, why are you trying to, like, get people just to, like, pay them on exposure? I'm not, I'm not trying to cheat the guy. I'm just saying, like, he can't be in that high demand these days. Okay, it's, I'm sorry it's, I it's, jumped it's, it on your throat like that. It's no longer the 80s or 90s. Who's who's clamoring for, for Joey Gladstone or, or fucking the host of, uh, uh, what the fuck was that show? <laughs> it was like the, my favorite show on Nickelodeon before you can't do that on television. <laughs> oh, Out of Control. He was a host of Out, Out of Control. control. Yes. I and mean, that show fucking ruled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I kind of, I don't like your attitude, and frankly, I'd like you to cut it out. All right. I think I'm out of control. I guess I think you are. I think you're flying off the handle. I can't be stopped. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, well, once again, Alex, uh, I'm very uh, excited for you. I hope you uh, get it all smoothed out a bit and you can still have a fun Thank you. place where people can go. Yes. Where everybody knows your name. Uh, and, and they're always glad you came. Yeah. Fun. Well, you're already there. Is uh, that's true. Yeah. I'm always glad they came. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That That works. Okay. Right, okay. Can we end the show now? <laughs> yes, we can. Thank you for oh, listening. Boy, that flew by, didn't it? It did. Um, all that talk about arcade games and bars and yelling at each other. Yeah. Oh, boy, it just flies by. Anyway, thank you, person, so much for listening to No More Whoppers. We do have a website on nomorewhoppers.tumblr.com. You can give us money irregardless of whether it goes to Alex or not. That's yes, not a word. Said, okay. I purposely did it for humor. For all intensive purposes? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, actually, that money should go straight to the podcast. So we can... Hey. Hey. What? Hey, what? Hey what? is for horses. What? You just going to up and run away with half the money? Jerk just off. For your own bar? Yes. That's not cool. Bye. You're fucked. Oh, you're still there. Bro, I that- work there, dumb fuck. <laughs> you, you do work here, yes. Uh, <laughs> Facebook.com slash no more whoppers. Twitter.com slash no more whoppers. Uh, Alex is also on Twitter. Follow me at Patui. That's P I T O H U I. Follow the bar at Critical Hit Bar. Follow uh, fun out of context that's bar be quotes. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, but you can change it, right? You can change your. Yes, thing. you can okay. change it. Well, it'll just be Critical Hit Shop. Uh, and follow out of context bar quotes at O O C C H Q. And I realized last episode, I didn't actually say what my Twitter name was. I only oh, no. <laughs> introduced yours. <laughs> so uh, I don't think it's any mystery, though. We only have the same, you know, 20 people listening. So nevertheless, I am RDBAAA on Twitter. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, visit Critical Hit. Uh, download Blast Rush, which I can announce now is uh, getting an update this month. Oh, shit. In August, yeah. DLC? Uh, no, just an update. with Horse the- horse armor. I mean, it, the game technically is already downloadable content. Uh, master mode. 
No, actually, it has two minute mode. Oh, what is two minute mode? Uh, well, is, it, is that a mode like, where uh, you, you fly around for about three minutes or so? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, cool. it is. That sounds good. It's a new way to get points uh, in two minutes. That Can sounds Can you fun. survive? No. Okay. <laughs> well, there's also some... There will also be some very big fixes that will make the game run like it should have a long time ago. Oh, uh, so, okay. Part of the learning experience of game development. And, uh, okay. Especially if you have it on Android, it will be much better. Um, yes, that's my news on that. <laughs> Fun! Uh, anything else? You'll be, I guess, part of a Super Bunny Hop video? That's right. Um, I think he said it's supposed to come out in early August, and it is early August, so <laughs> that's imminent. Yeah. Who knows? It could be tomorrow. It could be. You never know. And um, that's about it. Thanks, Alex, for being a good sport. Thanks, Ray, as always. And good luck to you, as always. Thanks. Everybody else, keep your nose clean, and we'll see you next time. Gold subscribers, stick around till after the show. We'll be nominating one of you to raise awareness of Hamster Parkinson's by taking the ice bucket at an electrical switching station challenge. Do you want ants? Because this is how you get ants.